All right, rattle worm, colossal rattle worm. Four mana, six five. Has flash as long as you control a desert. Oh, oh brother. <laughs> oh brother. I mean, four mana, six five with trample. Um, <laughs> what the? I mean, mono green stompy like eat it up, I guess, because. Oh, that's crazy. With flash too, like. This video is brought to you by Ultimate Guard. Ultimate Guard provides you with premium protection for your trading cards like their incredible katana sleeves, which are my absolute favorite for saving up my magic decks. Ultimate Guard has everything you need to keep your magic cards safe, secure, and stylish. If you're interested in getting the best sleeves on the market, make sure to use my link in the description below. We're gonna start this off strong by having a look at the, the mechanics in the set, okay? Outlaws. Success on this plane and in other place, I suppose boils down to the company you keep. Several cards in the set refer to outlaws. An outlaw uses a noun as any permanent with one or more of these creature types. Assassin, mercenary, pirate, rogue, and warlock. You often see abilities such as the one Wreckish Crew has that refer to an outlaw you control. Okay. This phrase refers only to permanents on the battlefield, not spells or cards anywhere else. Outlaws are almost always creatures, but a kindred permanent that will seen card type previously known as tribal. Okay. With one or more of the right creature types can also be an outlaw. Go figure. Uh, okay. Committing a crime. So we, we have the outlaws committing a crime. Success on this plane and other planes also impose down how far you're willing to go. What you want? Sure, sure, whatever. The new rules term committing a crime covers a range of common actions you'll probably be happy to take during your games. Several cards in the set will even reward you for doing so. I'm going to use that spoiler. You commit a crime as you cast a spell, activate an ability, or put a triggered ability on the stack that targets one or more of the following. An opponent, a spell, or ability and opponent controls, a permanent opponent controls, a card in opponent's graveyard. Nearly like everything's committing a crime then, but okay. Anyways, if a spell and ability doesn't target anything on that list, it's not a crime. Even if it targets something like an opponent's card in exile or has a sinister sounding name, that would be a felony. Once you cast a spell, activate the ability or put a trigger to stack, the crime has been committed. Doesn't matter what happens. Okay. Sure. So as long as we activate the ability, put a trigger to the stack, it targets one or more of the following. Opponent, spell, ability, they control. Okay. Sure. Um, spree. Success on this plan and our playing spells often boils down to not settling when you can have it all. Spree is a new keyword found on several modal cards in the set. Each mode includes an additional cost that must be paid to cast a spell. You must choose one or more modes as you cast a spell with Spree, but no single mode can be chosen more than once. If you cast a spell with Spree without paying its manacles, you must still choose one or more modes and pay those additional costs. Okay. The manacles is covered though, so at least you enjoy a nice discount. Sure. Spree cards have a modified frame that includes a plus sign by the manacles. This is just a reminder and has no actual real meaning. Remember that no matter which mode you choose and which additional cost you pay, the mana value of spell with spree is based only on its mana cost. For example, final showdown's mana is always one, even if you choose three modes. All right. Interesting. Mounts and saddles. <laughs> Success on this plane and other planes, I suppose, often boils down to not standing still for too long. Find yourself a trusty mount and saddle up. Third junction, let's ride. Sure. Mount is a new creature type. It doesn't have any specific rules associated with it. It's just where you're most likely to find the new ability saddle. There's no real connection between mounts and saddle other than a flavorful one. If a mount becomes some other creature type, it will still have saddle and non-mounts can gain saddle if effects allow them to do so. Saddle is an activated ability that you must activate as a sorcery, meaning during your main phase while the stack is empty. By tapping any number of untapped creatures you control other than the mount with saddle, with power n or more where n is the number of included the number included in saddle world word okay as the saddle ability resolves the mount becomes saddled until the turn this doesn't inherently mean anything but other than the ability card will somehow refer to the mount being saddled many mounts have simple triggered abilities like the one a trained arnix has these trigger whenever the mount attacks while saddled these trigger whenever the mount attacks while saddled some mounts will give you a little more bang for your bu bucking bronco okay sure our old friend the Git Rock doesn't treat its riders too kindly. So okay, you crew existing creatures. It's like it's so it's it's like crewing by tapping any number of untapped creature control other than a mount. It's basically like creature crew. Okay, <laughs> sure, that's fine. 
enlisting almost yeah right right plot success on this plane and other planes suppose often boils down to planning plot is a new keyword that allows you to pay a cost of fund and exile card in your from your hand the card then becomes plotted on a future turn you may cast a plotted card from exile without paying its manacles both the special action to the plot card from your hand and casting a plot card from exile are, own, are done as sorcery again meaning during your main phase while the stack is empty okay plot is a fantastic way to set up future turns knowing that your spell is available for no further mana investment to take full advantage of plan the highest you'd prefer to have the mana that have an empty hand as it resolves or maybe you're still searching for a second source of blue mana no matter your reasons plotting your cards sets you up for, for a potent turn in the future some plot cards offer cheaper plots, letting you save one mana if you're willing to wait for a future turn to finally cast a spell. Some are creatures with triggered abilities that you may want to time more strategically. What's more, the plot keyword isn't the only way to have cards you can plot at. Sometimes, something else, sure. So, yeah, like a delayed, like a, yeah, it's kind of like, you may pay and exile this card from your hand, cast it as sorcery at turn a later turn without paying its manacles plot only a sorcery it's kind of like a foretell but foretell still had a foretell cost <laughs> and these are free i guess so yeah it's like a suspend and you can choose whatever i guess you want to cast it yeah like it being free is a little different but we'll see so we've learned about mechanics let's keep going we'll, we'll go from like the very bottom to the top i guess like <laughs> All right, let's have a look. New Haunt. Two mana enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn and New Haunt isn't a creature, it becomes a 3-3 spirit creature with flying in addition to its other types. You can activate it to surveil one. Okay, so this turn thing turns into a 3-3 creature? That's kind of cool. Like, and it has the surveil ability. That's kind of, that's kind of neat. Maybe they want to like, work with like tempo stuff a little bit it's kind of cool i like it all right let's have a look at this one heath rebirth five mana return with one target permanent card from your grave to the battlefield return one target permanent card from your grave to your hand okay well that's giving insid insidious roots but it's a bit expensive but yeah that's some i'm thinking like insidious roots vibes maybe i guess sure all right let's have a look at this one the boots oh is that real i assume so plus one plus zero and has word one equip one sure what do we have here escape illusion one mana plus okay so this is a new thing exile target non-token creature spree cost plus one exile target non-token creature at the beginning of the next end step return to the battlefield it's like a fancy kicker to choose target creature if there's no other creature with greater power than to destroy that creature. Okay, that seems very versatile. So basically for three mana, I can destroy a creature with the great uh, the greatest power. You can not cast it for white just to, so you get rid of their most powerful creature and destroy their second most powerful. Or four mana blink something. That makes it quite flexible. I mean, technically, we're also looking at a two mana blink spell. It's an instant speed, too. Not horrible. Two mana blink, three mana destroy, four mana both. Yeah, that's not bad. You can can't choose zero modes, though, just to cast something. Right. Yeah, that makes the card a little bit weird <laughs> in a way. Like, why they've chosen to word it like that. But I guess it makes sense. Solvala, Eager Trillblazer. Okay, this is like questionable, but sure. <laughs> uh, legendary Creature Elf Scout, four mana, four, five. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a one, one red mercenary creature token with T, tap target creature you control up to the end turn. I can only sorcery. Tap, choose any, choose a color, add one mana of the color for each different power among creatures you control. Sure. And not, seems, doesn't seem too interesting to me, but you know um here we have the first pieces of incredible information we got fast lands back um where are they right here our gorgeous fast lands botanical sanctum like we have been awaiting your arrival <laughs> huge like just fucking huge like this is it's it's long overdue let's just 
say that, but you know, this is going to be huge for Izzet decks, for Boros decks, Ortsov, Golgar. I mean, Golgari, I felt like Golgari always had like reasonable mana, but this is like a savior. One of the potential scary things is now that Boros Convos ha has access to Inspiring Vantage. Um, they will basically be unstoppable right now. I mean, Cookie Enjoyers, we got the Botanical Sanctum, we will be thriving. I mean, these have been like long overdue, so I'm not mad at this. I mean, I'm obviously very happy. Um, is that and like Boros and like, you know, well, outside of Boros Gloomvoke, have felt so far behind for so long on mana. This is what we deserve, basically. Um, so I'm, I'm happy. This is like, this is necessary. Thank God, thank God we got it. So what are these then? And this battlefield tapped when it ends battlefield, it deals one damage to target opponent. So these are like desert lands, um, which will probably be relevant one way or another as well. Yeah, crime lands, I guess, because they do target an opponent. So I guess lands that trigger crimes, not too bad. Yo, anti-negative, thank you for the 41. Tier two, I appreciate you. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Crime desert. I mean, I'll always take some dual lands. Like, I'm not mad at that. On top of that, like, I find a lot more value in lands that will deal damage than lands that would gain you one life. <laughs> Personally, I guess it suits my playstyle a bit more, so I'm happy to see these. I mean, they could be a lot worse. The desert stuff might be relevant too, or like the committing crime or like whatever. All right, let's get into some more spoilers then. Uh, Insatiable Avarice? Avarice? Whatever. It is another spree card in black, sorcery. It, the, the thing is like, it's it kind of baits you like, ooh, a one mana sorcery. And they're like, nah, this thing is technically three mana, like, but okay. <laughs> so the first spree ability for one and two colorless of any color, search your library for a card, then shuffle and put that card on top. So we have a three mana tutor here. We can also have for three mana with that's black, 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 target player draws three cards and loses three life. Um, which is interesting. I guess you could technically also pay for all of it. Three mana, draw three cards, gain three life, or lose three life. And potential fetch, like, could be pretty, pretty strong. I mean, yeah, the fact that it says target player makes it so that you can target your opponent as well, which is quite cute. Like, we do still have this scorpion in standard. That's like sacrifice a creature, target player draws two cards and loses two life or whatever it is. So you could make like a an attacking Shelly deck or something if you wanted to. Um, this thing is interesting. An attacking Shelly deck. Pretty cool. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of strength and magic Ashley, always in, versi in like versatility and like having multiple options on cards. They remember thing for the 15. So these cards are probably a lot stronger than like we would expect them to be because having multiple options is always really really good so yeah sorcery speed is a bit sad but we move on fortune loyal steed three mana two four so when it ends the battlefield scry two it's also a legendary important piece of information potentially beast mount whenever fortune attacks while saddled at the end of combat exile it and up to one creature that saddled it this turn then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So it's kind of like a blink card. But it needs to attack. Okay, so saddling... Saddling is... I need to like read up more on saddle. Like, a, is it a bad vehicle? But there could be a lot of value in continuous blinking. You just got to make sure you attack with this thing. But Saddle doesn't do anything with for power and toughness and stuff like that. Crew for creatures? Yeah. <laughs> for fortune. Right, right. We can just blink something with this. I mean, it seems like a reasonable blink. Hey, yo, Grigchef, thank you for the biddies. Appreciate it. It seems like a, a reasonable like blink card. I don't know if we really have a big need for blink effects in standard, but it's pretty neat. So, sure, <laughs> you know, sure. Three mana, two, four, like, okay. Just cry to okay. Like at least you could uh exile it and up to one other creature. So like you get like continuous cries, which is pretty cool. But yeah, why not? Now I, I still think they can still attack Ryan, but you can settle them for something extra. They can also still attack regularly. Yeah. 
You can blink to flick prototype. Yeah, you could flip prototyped cards, which is pretty neat. Like you could do like the Steel Seraph or like George or something like that, which is kind of neat. Blinking prototype cards is still very powerful. So yeah, it's free value. It could seriously like be something with like prototype blinking. <laughs> Donnie, thank you for the 38. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. So then we have Raska joins up. Legendary enchantment, two mana in the colors of Golgari. When it Vraska joins up and enters the battlefield, put a death touch counter on each creature you control. Whenever a legendary creature you control, I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit here too. Whenever a legendary creature you control deals combat damage with player, draw a card. And that's just okay. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, that seems like. Yo, bad. Thank you so much for the 10 gifties. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That seems like a pretty reasonable super friends card like i mean you cannot underestimate like the, the death touch on a creature like this card helps itself and i think that's what makes it very strong <laughs> like that seems pretty neat especially like don't forget that once rafine leaves and stuff like that we need some other like additional like legendary payoff like it could very well be that Absin legends becomes a thing because i've always thought that Absin has really strong cards so like Absin legends has always been really strong even like junt legends has had a lot of potential something like this is like a, a two off in a deck that could be a lot of value i mean whenever a legendary creature you control deals combat damage to player draw a card i mean we see how good gix is this card synergizes with legends and it's pretty cheap like i mean i can see the the vibes still minus think you're five gifties hey, yo we have a movie night <laughs> more information uh, on that in the discord then yeah it's 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 an enchantment too so it's not like you're just gonna like go for the throw a gix it's just like frasca joins up stays so there's a lot of card advantage in this card and as we all know card advantage is good and the death touch counters can also be super relevant so i don't know i think this is a very strong card Jace reawakened and here we have a very very interesting card I looked at this a little bit because like what the hell is going on a two mana planeswalker for two mana blue and blue you get Jace and you cannot cast a spell during your first second or third turns during the game and there's with three loyalty the plus one draw card discard a card which is nothing special the other plus one you may exile a null land card with mana value three or less from your hand if you do it becomes plotted so the plotting was basically we can cast it the next turn for free so jace is basically casting free stuff um interesting but it's value but it has to be mana value three or less i've seen some like crazy stuff with this in older formats how it you know kind of synergizes with valky and you can cast like valky's planeswalker for free I've seen Jace with like, I've seen people talk about the blue ley line with Flash because that's a way to go around the um, static effect. It says your, uh, during your first, second, or third turns of the game, that means that you can cast it on your opponent's turn <laughs> on turn two if you want to, if you can manage to cast the card with Flash, which is, I think, only the blue ley line that I can think of that can do that. But stuff like that could be relevant in Pioneer. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's any way in standard to cast Jace on your opponent's turn, but still seems to be a lot of value. Yeah, it still seems to be a, a lot of value. So um, Jace seems strong, but it, it feels like Jace is definitely coded for different formats, older formats where we can do something with casting Jace as fast as turn two, and then you can really take advantage of it. So I doubt this card is going to get abused in standard, but it's definitely going to get abused in all their formats. Yeah, I saw a half Ashok. I was like, what the hell is this? First, I was like, this card looks AI generated. <laughs> I was like, this does not look right. I stand by it, but yeah, like something's up with Jace, I guess. Uh, it, it gave me AI vibe. I was like, oh God, is this AI art? But no, it just looks that way. And I was like, oh, okay. It's a weird image but i guess it's merch jace's merch with ashok i mean slay i don't know but yeah super interesting card i think it might just see play like regularly in standard but in older formats pioneer and maybe even modern some degenerate stuff could be coming up with chase for sure all right rectal's the muscle oh lord why is this card always so expensive 
they see Rakdos and they're like, this card has to be at least five mana or like, we're not doing it. Either way, let's read this. Five mana, six, five legendary creature demon mercenary. Flying and trample. Whenever you sacrifice another creature, exile cards equal to its mana value from the top of, top of target player's library. Until your next end step, you may play those cards and mana of any type can be spent to cast those spells. Sacrifice another creature, Rectals, the muscle gains indestructible to end a turn, tap it, activate only once each turn. Okay. So this is giving me vibes to uh, Immersturm Predator. Is that the right name? And that card was gas. So Immersive Predator was really, really powerful with indestructible stuff. The, the first thing that comes to my mind immediately as well is like this card, Sacrifice Another Creature, Rakdos Gains Indestructible, that is doable with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. So like you could cook here. You know, like I could shove Rakdos to Muscle in my like Rakdos Sacrifice deck, discard it to a blood token and give all my creatures the ability that Rakdos has. And like, I can also just cast it as a, as a, what, a five drop. And five mana isn't even that ridiculous, mind you. Like this still is a five mana, six, five with flying and trample and a huge ability. I mean, shove it in a cauldron, sacrifice deck and you're cooking, I think. Cause this thing looks pretty decent. Could be pretty good sacrifice. Like, I mean, we're seeing it in standard where Vein Ripper is thriving. So if Vein Ripper can be cast as standard and do things for you, this thing can do the exact same and gets like indestructible if you need it to be like I'm living. I think this could be pretty strong. I will absolutely be cooking with this for sure. I'll absolutely be cooking with this. The only yeah. A six mana six five or like a five mana six five is also very reasonable. Represents card advantage. Protects itself like this is a five drop that I would cast. You know, this is a five drop that I would deem worth playing, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with Rakdos Muscles. Probably the best Rakdos card we've ever seen. <laughs> it's probably the best Rakdos card we have ever seen. So we celebrate, you know. Indestructible can only be activated once each turn. Is that a problem? Nah. Nah, if somebody's going to fire off two removal spells on this thing, like if it's go for the throw, I make it indestructible, go for the throw, I'm still okay with that. So I'm trying to think if like, if the card's already tapped, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you could still activate it, right? Yeah, like the tapping isn't required. Even if the card is tapped, you can still do it. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't, you, you don't get active, not activated if it's not tapped. It would be like in the first half. So yeah, it would be part of the cost. So you, you're good there. You're good there. It just does it if it's like not, if it's untapped and you know, it would be part of the cost. I think if you, uh, anyways, pretty sick card. I would absolutely cast it. I'll absolutely play with it. Vraska the Silencer. Here we go. Three mana, three, three. This, she's got competition in the form of Glissa. Let's see what she does. Whenever a non-token creature and opponent controls dies, you may pay one. If you do return that card to the battlefield tapped under your control, it's a treasure artifact with sacrifices artifact. Add one mana of any colors that it loses all your card types. Yeah, this is kind of... Not for me. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 because return it to the battlefield tapped on your control. It's a treasure artifact. Sacrifice artifact and mana of any color. Like, you're not, you're not getting a Shelly for this. You just, you could turn a Shelly into a treasure on your side. It loses all other card types. Like, I guess it still has the ability. Because it's not like... Whatever, is the Vraska Planeswalker that works with treasures? It keeps abilities, yeah, but... It feels a bit too niche. I don't know. It, it feels a little bit too niche, I think. Um, but yeah, it doesn't say lose all their card types and abilities. It just says card types, so... Yeah. Would you get an ETB? I think so. 
I think you still get like ETB effects and stuff. It's just in a form of like a treasure. But. I don't know. I mean, we do have a lot of ETB cards in standard, so. I don't know. It's a very interesting card. <laughs> it's a very interesting card. I mean, there are a lot of ETB effects in standard. You could steal abilities. I just wonder if the card is like a bit too conditional. Because it's just a regular 3 mana 3-3 three, three with death touch. It doesn't really excite me, but... If this is like a high upside, then it could do absolutely a thing or two for you. You know? I'm not sure. Like this one is definitely one that you're gonna have to like experiment with and see if you're gonna get like value from it, you know? Interesting. Interesting. Undecided on, on Vraska. She could either be really gas or like mediocre AF. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Kellen, the kid. Wow. Kellen. Wow. There he is. Wow. Three mana, three, three. Flying and lifelink. All right. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you may cast. Okay. So that works with plotting. You may cast a permanent spell with equal or lesser mana value from your hand without paying its mana cost. Got a lot of free stuff. Free stuff is scary, man. Free stuff is scary. Like, why are we getting all these free cards? If you don't, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Okay, so this is really interesting. So what could I do? Like, I could plot something on turn two. I don't know if that's possible. I could plot something on turn two. I could play Kellen on turn three. Play my plotted card and then also play another three drop. Is that how I'm seeing it? <laughs> oh brother <laughs> oh brother okay that's a lot of free cards um i mean usually when it comes to magic the gathering free is good <laughs> free cards are normally broken in one way or another um yeah i think Kellen is definitely gonna depend on how many like good plot cards on two and three mana there are but um uh, yeah it's also works with like exile effects right like but exile effects i can't well we know that like pi and quintorius have like great exile synergy in um uh boros colors but i don't know what there is in like bend colors i mean probably enough i guess Discovering, uh, I don't know, Zoetic Glyph? <laughs> Ayo, Zoetic Glyph? Ayo, Ayo. Yeah, they definitely made it bend colors to avoid it being in Boros colors, because that's where the good Discover stuff is at, and like all the, the red exile cards and stuff like that, because we know what Pia can do. Hmm... Bend cookies. <laughs> yeah, Kaelin seems like one of those cards that's just waiting to get broken. Like, free cards are... very scary. Alright. Any flash to the veteran. But once again, we need, like, both cards with 2 and 3 mana. Um, flying lifelink, by the way. Yeah, not even bad stats or anything. Yeah. Kaelin has aged 15 years since Eldrain. He's gone through a lot of shit, you know? He's gone through a lot of shit. Mm. Any flash to the veteran. That seems like a very expensive card. Six mana, four five. All right, let's do something. This better do something here. Flash. I'm already getting commander vibes, but I'm gonna keep reading. When any flash to veteran enters the battlefield, if you cast it, return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your grave to the battlefield tapped. Whenever she becomes sad, exile the top two cards for the library. You may play those cards this turn. Reads commander. Like, that just reads commander. Nah. Mm, okay. The Gitrog Revenous Ride. Okay, this is definitely something different. They've definitely given Golgari a few treats uh, in the set. Five mana, six five. Trample on haste. Frog horror mount. When the Gitrog, when the Gitrog Ravenous Ride deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice a creature that saddled it this turn. 
If you do draw X cards and put up the X land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tapped, where X is the sacrifice creature's power, settle one. I mean, in general, we're looking at a 5 mana 6 5 a tremble and haste. Like, that's not bad. But it has a saddle upside to it, which ramps you up and draws cards for you. Seems like it does a lot. <laughs> Seems like it does a lot. The Ancient One, yeah. Good Rock and the Ancient One together could do some crazy stuff. Um, yeah, even with like cards like Mosswood or whatever, I, I think the card is super flexible. And at its core, even without settling, it seems really strong anyway, so... Um, five mana, six five with upsides. Mm. Okay. Anyways, pretty gas. Pretty gas. I'm definitely gonna say like this thing is gonna be become like playable. A lot of like five mana cards, but five mana is not impossible in standard like. Five minutes, six five, say less. All right, Magda the Horde Master. Hey, yo, Magda's back. Two mana, two two, Dwarf Berserker. Whenever you commit a crime, here we go. Create a tapped treasure. Disability triggers only once each turn. Cool how they call back to her like previous card. Sacrifice three treasures and create a four four red scorpion dragon creature token with flying and haste. Activate only sorcery. I mean, it's really unfortunate that there's not a lot of treasures in standard. Um, Elves, you could probably go nuts with this, but this is probably the reason why there are not a lot of treasures in standard. <laughs> um, it only triggers once each turn. It's like, eh, 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 eh. I don't know. I, I don't know seems like a bit it seems like a limited out of 10 to me because i don't as somebody that has tried to work with a bunch of treasures in standard there are just not many like there just really aren't that many you'd have to make a fully like treasure deck that builds around her like there's still a few cards that you can play like there's that one mana um aura card that gives a creature menace and whenever they do combat damage you, you create a treasure token there's a one mana creature in black from Ixalan, that upon dying creates a treasure. And Ben Fable, yeah. So there's some there's some treasure cards, but I don't, I don't know if this is consistent enough to do that for you. Um, but very cool anyway. Maybe, who knows? Maybe she can do something. All right, slick shot show off. I have seen this card and I am scared. Two mana, one two with flying and haste. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Six shots, show off, gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Yeah, that's gas. That's gas. With the haste on it too and the plot even. Like if you don't, like in turn two, for instance, you don't have to play this thing out. Like if I'm playing mono red aggro and it's my turn two and I have six will show off, I'm probably plotting this. And then I'm waiting till I can, you know, cast it for free on turn three and I'm holding up like my play with fire. I'm holding up my monstrous rages, like... Which makes it really gas. If I have it, if it's, I draw it on turn three and I have a Monstrous Rage to go with it, then I can just play the card out in Monstrous Rage. Which is kind of gas. Um, yeah, plotting screams remove me though. I mean, we're not going to be talking about like dice removal here. Like <laughs> everything does, like everything does. So... You know, it's basically just like another like type of swift spear, like prowess effect. You know what I mean? Like. Pretty gas. I mean, not really prowess, it's a little different, but you know. I think it replaces Picnic Runer. Nah, like it would probably go alongside Picnic Runer, I guess. So very strong, very strong creature. Like, and we know that Mono Red needs to support after like Kamigawa rotates out. So something like this could be huge, you know? Why plot it? You plot it to make sure that you can then cast an one drop instant or sorcery or whatever with it. It's kind of the thing. You plot it so that you can cast spells once you play the card. That's what I'm literally saying. If I play this thing on turn two, then I tap out, I cannot take make use of its ability. So if I plot it on turn two, 
lose one point of damage, but it means that I can cast multiple like non creature spells to follow it up with. I'm I'm gaming. So, you know, rather than making it vulnerable for one point of damage, you play it for free the next turn and you're you're good to go. So um you pay two No, that's not how plotting works. Plotting is free. Plotting is free. Like if I pay two and now and I can I can cast it for free later. It's not that I'm plotting it for two and then I have to pay two. So it's not plotting is free, which is kind of why it's broken. <laughs> like it's kind of why it's broken. You just pay the two now and then you can cast it for free. Like that's kind of nutty. All of a sudden I can play this creature for free and have three mana open in red to do whatever I want with it. It's like insane. Yeah. I mean, pulling is visible, sure, but still makes it gas. <laughs> like, it still makes it gas. I mean, free cards are scary, guys. They really are. They really are. All right, Tiny Bones. Oh my God, look at him <laughs> with the cowboy hat on. Tiny Bone. Tiny Bones joins up. Okay, so they all have these like join up cards, I guess. Interesting. Legendary Enchantment, one mana. When it enters the battlefield, any number of target players each discard a card. Okay, one mana, discard a card, pretty gas. Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield in your control, any number of target players each mill a card and lose one life. So that's committing a crime? Whenever you play a legendary creature, because target player, or so target opponent, or... Is that, a, am, I, am I reading that wrong? It's like a crime, right? So you commit a crime a turn. There's value in that. Shelly cowboy hat means coming. Yo, Nep, thank you for the reset. Appreciate you. Okay, interesting. So we're committing crimes and we're dealing one damage. I mean, so, something like this, if you cast this on turn one, like... I mean, it feels kind of insane because if you cast this on turn one, like go ahead and discard a card. I mean, you have to target... Oh my god, this is kind of gas. That's pretty damn strong. Target yourself, discard Bailiff. Yeah. <laughs> like, these drains add up. And it's the fact that it's one mana for me. And then your opponent, you can discard a card, commit a crime. I play a legendary creature, like, commit a crime. You mill a card, lose one life. This adds up, like... This adds up. Yeah, Tiny Bows and Magda already. Like, you can start just committing cries every damn time. Like, this is a fast way towards treasures, man. <laughs> that is a fast way to get the treasures. Damn. I mean, part of me is upset that once again, there seems to be a heavy focus on legendary synergy. And I'm, like, kind of tired of that. But, all right. Go crazy, go stupid. <laughs> go crazy. All right, the Great tra Train Haste. All right. One mana, so you have a spree card again. Instant, instant. Oh, this looks kind of expensive. So for four mana total, if we go over to the first one, and tap all creatures you control. If it's your combat phase, there's an additional combat phase after this one. Okay. For three mana, creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain first strike. Eh. For one mana, choose target opponent. Whenever a creature you control does combat damage to that player, create a tap treasure. Oh. Okay, well, clearly there's some, like, Magda synergy going on over here. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess we're creating treasures. Like, that's one thing that I'm seeing so far. We want treasures again. That's a fast way to activating Magda. All right. Sure. Seems interesting, but it feels like it only really works in Magda. You know. Um, Giza, the Hellraiser. Giza's back, 5 mana, 4-4, four, four. Human Warlock, Ward 2, pay 2 life. Okay. Wait, so her Ward 2? She's got Ward 2 and then pay 2 life. Okay. Like a double, like, Ward cost kind of vibe? 2 mana and 2 life? Interesting. Skeletons and zombies you control get plus 1, plus 1 and have Menace. Okay. Whenever you commit a crime, create two tapped, two two blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens. Triggers only once each turn. Um. Okay. Yeah. 
Like, why has it got to be so expensive? I... It feels a little bit commander coded to me, and I hate to say that, like... I, I hate to say that. Skellies and zombies. Yeah, like, I do love a skeleton and zombie lord, but it's like... I don't know. I wish she was four mana. They hate to see a bad bitch thrive. Always five mana and up. Nah, it's true. She's a bit slow, yeah. She's a bit slow. Like, you really don't want to have a five drop for a lord. And, like, even her... She doesn't even commit a crime herself. Like... Like, I... I mean, maybe it's too much to ask, but if I'm casting a five mana mythic legendary creature, like, let her at least commit a crime upon entering the battlefield or some shit. Just say, like, target players, like, you know... Every player, like, mills a card or some shit. I don't know. Or target opponent mills a card or, like, whatever. Like, at least let me cast a five mana and then get, like, two zombies for it. Maybe that's too strong, but that's kind of, like, what I'm expecting out of this, so... Yeah. Hate to see it. She does if you have tiny bones up. Sure. <laughs> Sure, like if you have tiny bones, you do get the Giza trigger immediately, but I don't know. What do you have to play then? Like a mono black legend stack or something to get consistent value or just have it as value in general? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not convinced, but I would like to see her be good because I do love what she represents. So these are like the pre-con commanders, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, final showdown. One mana, instant, spree card. For two mana, all creatures lose all abilities until end of turn. For one mana, choose a creature you control. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Now, what the hell is... What the hell is that? Another fucking... Is that an instant speed board wipe? Nah, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Hell no. At least it doesn't exile, but... Hell no. That's not seven. That's six mana. Arr... That's like one off from Sunfall. Like, be real. Especially because... Don't mind you. Farewell rotates, by the way. So, doesn't it? Was Farewell Kamigawa? I think so. Anyways, um, you know, I'm just grateful it says destroy, not exile. That's all. <laughs> That's all, like, at least it doesn't exile, guys. But instant speed rats, like, be serious. Like, what is this shit? The fairy, like, the fairy three where? Was it not traumatizing enough? I don't know. The, the thing is, the thing is, I doubt this sees, this sees much play because we still have so many board wipes in standard that are just good. So I, I think, I don't know if people should ever need to resort to like, you know, a six mana instant destroy board wipe as long as Sunfall exists, but it's cool. I mean, as a cypher card, I don't, I don't know, like seven mana to give us something indestructible and then wipe everything. I don't know. Yeah. It gets rid of indestructible, which is interesting. I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's so many board types in standard. This isn't needed, but... It's a cool concept, but I, I do hate the instant speed wrath. Like, that's not great. <laughs> All right, another spree card. Unfortunate accident. Oh, that's the classic. Like, locked on the... Um, the rails. Cute. One mana. Plus an additional three, okay? Destroy target creature. Four mana, destroy target creature, okay? For two mana, create a 1-1 one, one mercenary with target creature control, gets plus one plus zero. Okay, this is just... Whatever, man. We move on. <laughs> probably, like, people on Limited probably pick that up. They're like, word, four mana, destroy, I'll take it. Like... Okay, plan the highest. Four mana, sorcery. Surveil three. If you have no cards in hand, then draw three cards. And this is called a plot cost. 
So, yeah, this is like, okay, I'm casting four mana to cast this eventually for free. And then I can surveil three and draw three cards. Eh. Seems like a limited out of 10 or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not stoked on that. It's not awful, but... I'm not stoked. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean... It's a sorcery, which makes it really awkward for blue mages, usually, so... I mean, I guess you do draw three cards, but sorcery, eh. Eh. Anyway, slick shot lockpicker. Three mana, two, three. When it enters the battlefield, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until the end of turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost, and you can plot this card as well. So this is one of those cards that is normally like, I don't want to play this shit, but with the plot cost, it could actually be really interesting. So this is really this is a really cool design. I mean, I don't think this is going to see play in standard or whatever, but it's a really cool design choice. So we love to see that. We're, we're moving on up in the world, kind of. Yeah. Crown Violent Cacophony. Oh, Lord. A four mana, two, three. This is probably one of those cards that indicates like the what, what the colors represent in limited. Whenever you cast your second spell, each turn, put a one counter on Crown and draw a card. Sure could be like a limited all-star vibes, right? Like if you're an Izzet, this is kind of like what the colors represent. Make your own luck. Simic, look at the top three cards of your library. You make exile a Nolan card from among them. If you do, it becomes plotted. The rest into your hand. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is really interesting. So you cast one card for free and you put the rest in your hand. That's a lot of cards. Yeah, like five mana free attracts I'll draw two. Like, um... But the only thing is that, like... Ah! <laughs> it's a bit scary. I don't know. Yeah, like you, you kind of have to build your deck around getting value for this stuff. Which is ironically why it's called make your own luck. And ironically why it's called make your own luck. You know what I mean? Because yes, you do have to build your deck in a way that you can get great value from this. But the fact that it puts two cards into your hand rather than like... Normally this would be one of those cards where it's like put it at the bottom of your library or something. It's like not nah, put it into your hand, bestie. Scary stuff, like... Could be very scary. Alright, Rattleworm? Colossal Rattleworm? We've seen this card before. 4 mana, 6, 5. Has flash as long as you control a desert. Oh, oh, brother. <laughs> oh, brother. 6, 5 with flash and trample. For 2 mana, you can exile it from your graveyard and search your library for a desert. I mean, four mana, six, five with trample. Um, <laughs> what the hell? I mean, mono green stompy, like, eat it up, I guess, because. Oh, that's crazy. With flesh, too? Like. I don't know. I wonder if there's, like, more flesh support somewhere, but what? That's, like. I mean, you do have to control deserts, mind you. Like, that's not the easiest thing to do. Then again, you can also just cast it as a 6-5 and not care about the deserts. <laughs> Which isn't bad. Like, I don't need to have this with Flash. It'd also just be a 4 mana 6-5 with Trample. Like, I'll take it. Wow. Okay. Huge pickup for, like, at least Mono Green. I don't know where else you want to put this, but pretty chunky. Cactarantula? Cactus Tarantula? Vibes? Was one less to cast for each for to cast if you control a desert. Okay, so we can cast it for five. When it becomes the target of a spell or a bunch of controls, you may draw a card. Seems like an absolute limited all-star. <laughs> a five mana six five that draws you a card when it gets like replaces itself when it gets targeted. Seems like limited all-star. 
All right, now who's this bad boy right here? Goblin Burstenary, File Smasher, Gleeful, Grenadier, whatever that is. Gren Grenadier? I don't know. Whenever an, an outlaw enters the battlefield under control, Vile Smasher. So was Mercenary part of Outlaw? I guess so. Mercenary, Pirate, Rogue, and Warlock, Assassin. Okay. Pirate, Rogue. Pirate is like huge, by the way. The Pirate Stonks are fucking growing. Pirate Stonks. Whenever another outlaw ends battlefield in your control, Vile Smasher deals one damage to target opponent. So it then commits a crime. So you play a mercenary, you com you play an outlaw, you commit a crime. It's kind of the vibe. I don't know. I mean, have we seen good, like, crime committing crime payoff yet? I feel like, I guess, Magda. Like so far, like Magda has been like the crime. Crime leader. Magda and Gisa. Okay, so a lot of committing crimes in the colors of red black, which, you know, adds up. Quilt Charger. Four mana mountain. Porcupine. What, is this the porcupine parrot grown up? <laughs> Does anybody remember the porcupine parrot? Whenever it attacks while well, it's settled, it gets plus one two against mana on the turn. Settle two. Sure. Cute limp for limited, I guess. The, the porcupine parrot. Now, who is this baddie? Rattle, Rattleback Apothecary. Three mana, three two, Gorgon Warlock. Death Touch. Whenever you commit a crime, target creature you control gains your choice of menace or lifeling. Oh, boo. It's going to be like limited. If you commit crimes in limited, you want to pick that up. Yeah. Armored Armadillo. <laughs> one mana, zero four, ward one. Sure. Gets plus X for zero and turn where X is its toughness. Cute. What a bestie. No, this one is funny. Holy cow. Ah ha ha. Knee slapper. Like, wow. Ah ha ha. Three mana, two two with flash and flying. When it enters battlefield, you gain two life. Let's try one. All right. Holy cow. Holy cow. It's an ox angel. <laughs> yeah. Knee slapper. Like, cow angel. Like, ox angel is quite funny, but, you know. Sure. Scorching shot, two mana, deals five damage to target creature. Excuse me. Oh, Shelly, count your days. Like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Two mana, five damage to target creature. Rip Shelly. Like, ooh, that's pretty good, guys. I mean, sorcery is sad, but it would be ridiculous if it was instant speed. Like, you take these. Shelly players and shambles? Nah, it's true. It's true. You take these for sure. That's gonna replace Witch Talker. I don't know. I don't know. It could. Maybe you want to play both. I don't know. It's not bad, though. Two mana, deal five damage to target creature. I mean... Yeah, one two of this, one two of Witch Talker, maybe like a two two split somewhere. <laughs> Eight copies. Honest Rustine. Okay, Rusty is back. Downgraded to a, an uncommon though. Damn. I'm pretty sure old Rusty was a rare. I don't know. When Rustine enters the battlefield, return a target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Ding ding ding. We're getting some insidious roots value. Creature card, creature spells you cast goes one less to cast. All right, that's pretty... That's kind of like value. I mean, a 3-mana three 3-2 three isn't too exciting, but... It's not bad or whatever. I, I don't know what deck would want this. I guess, like, maybe if you're playing a Legends deck and you have a bunch of expensive Legendaries, this could be very relevant. I like the ETB effect, too. You know? I mean, Insidious Roots doesn't really care about making creature spells one less to cast necessarily, so... Um, self mill Golgari big boys. Yeah, like maybe like in a Legends deck, you can have some expensive creatures where a discount could be nice. One mana Dread Knight. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have to accompany it with some card draw because, you know, you do want to have a, a hand that you can just shit out when you have Rusty on the board. So I guess it would go pretty nicely with um, the Vraska enchantment, for instance. Amalia? <laughs> Is Amalia want that? 
Interesting. The new Gidrock on turn four. Yeah, like it would probably be like a legendary creature deck support, I think. Sure. Frontier Seeker, Human Scout, when it ends the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a mount creature card or a plains card from among them and put it into your hand. The rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. Hmm, I feel like a little limited coded. I don't know. Reminds me a little bit of like Bitch with a Horse though, where you find the planes, but yeah. <laughs> the Bitch with the Horse is back. I'm pretty sure she was going to rotate anyway, so. I'm pretty sure she was going to rotate, so I guess they have like another like white creature that fetches a land, the Horse Girls, but this time she's on a bird. So, Bitch with the Bird, yeah. <laughs> Ruthless Lawbringer, 3 mana, 3 2, Vampire Assassin. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target element permanent. Wow. Removal on a stick? Vampire as well carries the vampire tag. I actually would fit perfectly in my like veto sacrifice deck that I build. Destroy target null and permanence pretty big. On a 3-2 body, like... All right. <laughs> All right, yeah, this is for Vito. Like, yeah, it's blinkable. It's pretty neat. All right. The key to the vault. Two mana equipment. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, look at that many cards on the top of your library. You may exile an old card from among them, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may cast the exile card without paying its manacles. Equip three. Okay. Eh, usually not a big fan of these type of cards. It's probably for like older formats or something. Maybe you're like EDH. All right, so here we have some like, um, yeah, special guest cards. These are not legal and standard, but they're just accessible and like Wait, can you find these in Limited? Can you play Oko Thief of Crowns in Limited again? Are these Limited legal? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh, okay, can't wait to get hit by fucking Oko Thief of Crowns again in Limited. Yay. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. <sighs> Alright. Well, guess we got that to look forward to. <laughs> I guess we got that to look forward to. And the special guests. Brazen Barber, oh lord. Okay. Morbid opportunist, what are you doing here? Almost thought this was Goma and I got scared. Mystic Snake's also pretty good though. Yeah, for Historic, I guess. Got a neat. Path to Exile. Yeah, Morbid's opportunity as a mythic is kind of crazy. This used to be an uncommon, wasn't it? Like, huh? Notion Thief. If an, if an opponent would draw a card, except the first one, they draw each turn on their, end, on their draw step. Instead, a player skips the draw and you draw a card. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Four mana, though, but that's that's kind of cool. Everything's a mythic now. Yeah, right? Mythic Morbid opportunist, like the upgrade of the century. <laughs> the glow up, like, I don't know. So these are standard legal, I'm pretty sure. This is like the standard legal like um, symbol. It's like the aftermath set. So Torpor Orb, two mana. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, well, shit. That's pretty strong. Considering how many ETB effects are in standard. Attracts our Rip Bozo. I mean, the entirety of Convoke, Rip Bozo, like. Ooh. Oh, well, you can clearly see why they reprint it or like why they put that in standard, but um. Um bats, like it this shuts down a lot, guys. Well, that's clearly going to be a sideboard all-star. I hate that it's a mythic though, but okay. Ripped with many bozos. Yeah. <laughs> Ripped with many bozos. Uh, there do be... The thing is, there is a lot of artifact hate. Like, there is Gleeful Demolition in Convoke, of course. Which does remove an artifact, but... 
you know, if they cast Gleeful Demolition on Torpor Orb and not, you know, to get a turn to Pioneer start, and like, isn't Thrall already the same? Yeah, but this is colorless, of course, so everybody gets it. You know? Um, everybody gets it, so that's pretty neat. Massive Dinosaur, Faultborn Tyrant. 7 mana, 6-6. Six, six. Whenever Tyrant or another creature with power 4 or greater ends spells in your control, you gain 3 life, draw a card. When it dies, if it's not a token, create a token, it's a copy of it, except it's an artifact. Trample. Seems like it could be a decent, um, you know, what's the enchantment called? Fight rigging target, perhaps? You stupid fucking yo, nap. Oh, why am I saying yo, tap? Got the dinosaur, uh... <laughs> The, the, the dinosaur stupid fucking dinosaur alert yeah i mean i don't know it could be like a reasonable target for that maybe i don't know old tech matter weaver three mana two four whenever you cast a creature spell choose one create a gnome create a token it's a copy of target artifact you control all right sure transportation form five mana create your choice of a blood clue or foo token Sacrifice three artifact tokens with different names. Search your library for an artifact carpet onto the battlefield and shuffle. Um, I don't know if this could do anything broken in standard. I can't think of it, if anything. Yeah, blood tokens. Let's go. <laughs> Trained Arnix or Ar 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 Arinx. Arinx. Trained Arinx. Two mana, three, one. Whenever it attacks while it's settled, first strike and then the turn scry one. Settle two. So this is basically like two mana three one with first strike if you want it to be and scry. Not horrible. First strike's pretty good. Eight mana the search portal. Sure. <laughs> Six mana portal to Phyrexia, I guess. Um, Rakish crew. This image looks makes them look like losers. Anyways, three mana. When it enters the battlefield, create a mercenary. Dark creature control gains plus one plus zero to end the turn. Activate a sorcery. Whenever an outlaw you control deal dies, each one loses one life, you gain one life. An outlaw you control dies. Ooh, because do you guys remember the three mana enchantment from God, what was the set? Yeah, Bastion of Remembrance. But it's like typal, like Bastion. And Bastion of Remembrance was a good card, mind you. And you know why Bastion of Remembrance was good? Because Bastion of Remembrance, upon entering the battlefield, created a target that would work with it. And this thing does the same. Because you do get the Mercenary as well. So you have an immediate, like, sacrifice target. It's just the fact that Outlaws are somewhat difficult to accomplish. Bastion was three. And Bastion was everything. Yeah, Bastion working like that's I, I'm just wondering if there's a way to like take advantage of this card because those types of effects are pretty damn good usually. But it's the fact that it's limited to an outlaw that probably holds this card back like crazy. So I don't know how many like rogue tokens, pirate tokens, warlock tokens, not assassin tokens. Like there's not really tokens that get created like that, you know? Because if you want to play this in like a sacrifice shell, it might not be easy to find types of those to sacrifice. Which probably holds it back. Because obviously like Bastion was huge because you just created a white board and you sacrifice your stuff. But yeah, maybe there'll be more support for this. Double down. Okay, she has absolute like the, the pink cowboy hat. I mean, come on now. <laughs> Four mana. Whatever you cast an outlaw spell, copy that spell. So that reminds me of what is the... The weird, like, card from Midnight Hunt. Yeah, Necro Duality. <laughs> but this is with mercenaries or and assassins and rogues and pirates and outlaws and warlocks, whatever. Interesting. I don't know. I mean, Necro Duality never saw that much play, I feel. I don't know if this is going to be, like, that good. It's going to be, yeah, it's, it's like fun jank. Satoru, we get a ninja and a rogue, I guess. Two mana legendary creature, menace. When Satoru and or and or one or more other non-token creatures enter the battlefield in your control, if none of them were cast or no mana was spent to cast them, draw a card. 
Okay. What? <laughs> Is that just plotting synergy or am I missing something? Non token creature ends battle in your control if none of them were cast or no mana was spent to cast them. Draw a card. Nah, ninjutsu doesn't work. Does ninjutsu work with that? Reanimating does. Because ninjutsu is an ability, I guess, right? Interesting. I mean, it's worse. It, it's pretty bad that like all the Kamigawa like ninjas are going to rotate, but maybe the historic deck wants this. I don't know. Would it want that? Yeah, it's got some like blink synergy as well. Good with Jace, perhaps? Yeah, maybe some like Jace synergy as well that like plots. It could absolutely also just be a commander out of 10 for sure, but like a two mana, two, three hundred menace are great stats. So like if there's just even the slightest bit of synergy potentially with Satoru, it's playable. You know what I mean? Maybe plotting can be enough? A collective company? <laughs> Coco, Ayo? Coco Gas? Calvin with Satoru? That is true. Or may maybe this card can even see playing like... I guess not. Blue White Mentor doesn't reanimate too aggressively. New football tip can plot. Coco ninjas. <laughs> it's got some potential. I'm in I mean there's still some ninjas in standard, mind you, so maybe. Hey yo, it's Jolene. Jolene from the song. Four three mana four two human mercenary. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures with power four or greater, create a treasure. Okay, so the power four or greater synergy and gruels back. Sacrifice a treasure, deals one damage to any target. Whoa, Jolene, I don't know about that one. Um, she'll take our man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why does her snake have horse legs? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. It doesn't seem great, you guys. It seems like a limited out of 10, you know? Like, ooh, I'm, I'm in limited. I might as well grab Jolene. It feels like a card that, you know, once again, just like... This is what Gruul does in Limited, and here's Jolene. So if you find her, go ahead. You know? Form a posse. Two mana, X two mana. Create X one one red mercenary creature tokens with our creature gains. So here we have some synergy with like the Rackish crew. This is like a massive mercenary token creator moment. Mardu sack. I mean, you'd have to find a way to cast it massively, but. Posse plus O'Hare war plus War Leader Stonk. I mean, it is true. Like, it could definitely be part of a War Leader Skull type of deck with, like, O'Hares and stuff. Pretty interesting. She's got a Snores. <laughs> Snake Horse. She has a Snores. Yo, now I like, never knew that I ever had. I, I've never heard of Snores before, but I kind of want one. That probably is one of the scariest things ever. If, imagine somebody just riding a fucking King Cobra or some shit with legs. So it's not even slow. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Snores Girl era. <laughs> nah, that's scary, for real. That's pretty scary. I'd be... I'd feel very threatened. Lazaf, Familiar Stranger. 3 mana, 1 for. Shapeshifter. Oh lord, 3 mana, 1 for. Whenever you commit a crime, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Lazaf. Then you may exile a card from a graveyard. If a creature card was exiled this way, you may have Lazaf become a copy of that card. Triggers only once each turn. So that's basically, it's kind of really cool how like all of the cards, you know, somehow reference like the older cards again, because this is basically also like two mana Lazaf. Um, whenever, but this, whenever you commit a crime, give it a one-one counter, exile a card from the graveyard. If a creature card is exiled, it becomes a copy event and turn. Triggers to once each turn. Make them discard a track stuff for stonks. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I had really a great success with Lazaf copying Dreadfast Demon. But I don't know if this one is better or worse. I'm not sure. We need <laughs> Power of the Snores Girl, yeah. Interesting. Bov bovine Intervention, two mana. Instant, destroy target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 2 2 white ox. Pretty versatile. I'll play Get Lost, though. Like, I'm good. It works with the Arlozaf. Yeah, that's kind of cool. 
But I really like the holy cow joke. I know. Let's see if we can get a refresh. Maybe there's some new cards. No. I think that's about it. Um, seems to be some very interesting stuff in here so far, you guys. The, the, from what I'm seeing so far, the set definitely feels more powerful than Murders at Carl of Manor already. Like a lot of Murders at Carl of Manor was incredibly limited and commander coded, and this feels for constructed. Like I remember like looking at MKM and being like limited out of 10, limited out of 10, limited out of 10. And this is like, or, you know, commander out of 10, commander out of 10, commander out of 10. And this is a lot of like, okay, I could see this in constructed. I could build around this. You know, nothing is like incredibly ridiculously, ridiculously like costed everything. There's a lot of support for like archetypes and standard. So if this is anything to go off on, then this is a good sign so far. Um, a lot of really cool cards already. Like I would brew around like fucking half of these cards. So, which is great. MKM didn't really give us that freedom. So this one's for the besties. Yeah. Really cool. Really cool card so far. I'm excited to see more. And obviously huge that we're going to get the enemy fast lands. So big, big win for the besties for sure. I'm excited. Thank you.